Welcome everyone. My name is David Rojas. I'm a manager for Global Solution Architecture at Red Hat. And today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite features of Ansible Automation Platform, the fact that it can be vendor agnostic and truly, you know, it's the situation of one tool to automate your entire enterprise, not just one specific product or under one specific vendor. Uh, you don't have to worry about having five, six, seven different automation tools. It's one and it'll manage your entire enterprise. Today, specifically to give you that example, we're going to take a look at service management. Whether you're on a Windows server or a, or a Linux server like RHEL, you're going to need to manipulate services, right? You need to make sure you set them up to start up on boot or not, right? You need to make sure and restart them when you need to restart them for whatever reason. You need to be able to stop those services and, of course, start those services. So let's dive a little deeper into this use case. So what's our business problem that we're trying to solve? Uh, managing services across various server vendors. Uh, this is something that's always a need, whether it be for you know changes you know during change windows, whether it be for break fix situations during incident management, uh, or just everyday work that needs to get done. Um, so again, the benefits of doing it through Ansible Automation Platform. First of all, and foremost, it's vendor agnostics. You got one platform that goes out and automates against all these products. Today, we'll show you how to do that. You know, services on web servers. You know, a Windows web server and a RHEL web web server and you'll see how we're able to do it against both. Um, of course, speed to production, automation is always going to increase the ability to go out there and not just automate against one or two servers, but potentially hundreds or even thousands. Uh, reduce human error, right? It's very easy to go in there and stop the wrong service uh, or, res or stop it instead of start it or, or some mistake that could occur there. You're making sure here that it goes out there and does the exact same thing to every single server and does it in the correct way. Uh, reduces complexity. Uh, the person doing this doesn't necessarily have to be a system administrator. It can be. It could be someone you're not. In fact, the use case we'll bring up right now is it's in the middle of the night on a Saturday evening. You know, you're hopefully not at work and potentially asleep. And you get that phone call, right, that says, hey, we need to, something's wrong with the server. People can't access it. And one of the basic, you know, troubleshooting is to go ahead and restart the service. Stop and restart it, hit a restart, something of that nature. And of course, the not personnel can either wake you up, have you log in remotely and go to each one of these servers and do that work, or they can launch an automation job without them having to have direct root access or admin access to do this. They can do that and not even bother to wake you up unless, of course, it doesn't come up after that. They may have to wake you up. But um, And then security, of course, as we mentioned, they don't have to have root or admin rights. You don't have to give them your password over the phone because you know you're not you're having access, you're trouble accessing those servers remotely you're able to do this uh, in a very quick very concise and very secure manner all right so with that let's get right to it i want to go to my ansible automation tower here um, and we'll go right to the template so as you can see we have a service management for rel and windows and we're going to manage those services and in this case we're managing web services right for what we're assuming these are all web servers and there's a need to stop the services, restart them, and so on. Um, you can see there's other job templates here, playbooks. I'll explain to you why those are there in a little bit. Right now, we're going to focus on one. Uh, and just to give you an idea, of what we've done is we have an inventory. All right, we have a you know our fictitious mixed OS farm. Within that, we have groups, and those groups have the mixed web servers, which includes the RHEL and Windows, and we have separate groups as well for RHEL or Windows. If we have playbooks that automate against one or the other, we can use those groups. In this case, we're going to go up against all the web servers, whether they're on RHEL or whether they're on Windows, and do that work. So we're hitting this one here. Uh, and just to give you our example here, we can look at the host. And as you can see, we have a RHEL server and we have a, a Windows server as well. You know, RHEL's running Apache, uh, Windows server running IIS. All right, let's go to our template. Let's launch our job. And poof, right away we get our survey, right? And again, the survey, and we'll show you in a little bit how to create this. Very, very simple, doesn't require any coding of any type. Uh, it's done with all within the GUI interface here. So you can select from the drop down list. We have two services here. You can list as many as you want to include in that playbook. We're going to go with our web services because that's what's at, at issue right now. Uh, our web services, by the way, we'll show you. Here's our websites. Okay, this is uh, running on Windows, IIS. And this is running on RHEL 8 on Apache. So that's all working there. So we're going to stop these, right? We're going to stop the services. So those websites should go down. Um, this here, don't worry about it too much. But just so you know, we can also set this. To, right now, we're set, telling it, hey, 
on boot, we want these services to start up. If we want to change this to no, we can. You know, there may be instances where you want to reboot the server, but not the service itself. You could always set it to no. For now, we're going to leave it as default as yes. But again, we're going to stop these. We see the variables that are going to be used, and we launch. All right, so now this takes us to another screen, shows us the job running up here, date, time information, the job templates being used, the inventory that it's hitting, launched by admin, the project, all these different things, uh, inf good information to have here. Um, if you come over to the right side, you'll see the task actually running. So we want our Ansible playbook is running. It's gathering facts, and I'll explain what that means in a little bit as we begin to see this and we get more details. Uh, and there's a reason I'll show you in the playbook in a little bit. We actually took this, these Ansible facts to determine which one was a Rails mm -hmm. server and which one was a Windows server. And then that allows, as the playbook runs, and you'll see here, this one's a Windows server, right? 150.6, 150.35 is Red Hat. It's gonna use that what we call a magic variable, and I'll show you in the playbook in a little bit, to determine when it does this for Windows specifics, it's only going to run that task, if you see there in green, for the Windows server. For the RHEL server, it's tasked against a Windows component. It's simply going to skip it and say, nope, don't run that here. That's going to fail because it's not the right type of server. And then it keeps going here. It's here's the opposite, right? This is using it against RHEL. It will skip the Windows server and make the change only on the RHEL server. And again, it's, it begins to do this all the way through. When you see actual this in in orange here, that says it's been changed, meaning we actually stopped the service here and we stopped the service there, right? And as you can see, it skips the other one because one is for RHEL and one is for Windows. And we'll see that in the playbook a little bit. We concluded successfully. You can see up here status successful. And now if we go to check our websites and refresh, we'll do both of them at the same time. And pretty quickly, this one is down. This one's still trying to connect, but it's going to fail. They're taking a long time to fail. In the meantime, let me show you the playbook. I'll take a look at that real quick while that fails for us. Here's the playbook, and I wanted to show you these details really quick. First of all, these two here can be actually be removed. Uh, the reason I left them in there was to show you, especially this portion here, where it picks up that magic variable every time it connects to a host, it'll it'll pick up a number of pieces of information because we are indeed gathering facts here. And one of the things that picked up was that Ansible distribution that I showed you on the job run, and that allows us to know whether it's a Windows server or a Rails server. That server in turn, now that distribution type, we're able to put in here, like do this task when Windows is an Ansible distribution, or do this task when Red Hat is an Ansible distribution. And so what we did here in the first few tasks, all we did is assign values to variables that we'll use later on. <clears throat> and again, it's different based on the module you're using. And because they're two different type of vendors, it's two different modules. Each module has slightly different settings. And if, for example, the name of the service is different. IIS is called this within Windows environment. And within RHEL, we're going to call Apache is called this, HTTPD. So we needed to set those correctly. And then really the meat of the playbook is all in this section here. Two, two tasks, one for Windows, as you can see, when Windows in Ansible, and then the other when, when Red Hat in Ansible distribution. This one is called when service, it manipulates that service and stops it. And this is called service, it'll do that for RHEL as well, right? Okay, let's put that back down. As you can see, both of our websites are failed right now as we had stopped the service. So let's go back to our templates. We'll run this again. We are going to put it in a state of started. Nothing else changes. We're still focused on our web service. We're going to hit launch. And here goes the job one more time. You'll see it go through ex exact same steps, same task, right? The difference being what we set that one variable to, to started. And so now to go through all this, and again, remember it's, it's changing one or making against one type of vendor, the other one it's skipping depending on that task and whether it's intent, it's using a module that's for rel 
for Linux or whether it's using one that's for Windows. And at the end, we see a change on both, which is a good sign. That means it started the service, but don't take my word for it. Let's bring these up. There's that one. There's this one. So here's our RHEL 8 running Apache. That's up and running. And here's our Windows on IIS. That's up and running now as well. All right. And just know that we have, I will show you one more time without actually running it, but just so you know, you're able to stop, start and restart it. So you can set this to restart it as well. You're able to go in there in case of, you know, some configuration change, some, you know, change window, and you need all web servers restarted. You don't have to stop and start. You just restart it because the way you would do it on a command line, but you do 20, 30, 50, 100 web servers all at once. Last thing I wanted to show you was in the job template itself. <clears throat> I mentioned earlier that the survey needed to be created to collect that information, right? So this is where we recreate them. I'll show you an example. You know, and you really just fill in the blanks, right? The prompt, the description, the variable that it will use within your playbook. That has to be exactly the same there. The type of answer type, and then the multiple choices in this case, and default answers, you know, and you do that for each of these all a little bit different. You save these. We'll just cancel out of that. All right. And with that, thank you very much for joining us. Hope you learned something about Ansible automation and the ability to be vendor agnostic. Remember, the whole idea here is that you can use what platform across your entire enterprise to, be, to have secure, efficient automation. Thank you. Have a good evening.